couple reminders for you as you try to stay in touch and up to date with what's happening in the world. You can get text updates directly to your phone if you text the word STAND to 67742. That's the word STAND to 67742. You never know when we're going to be deplatformed. So that makes sure that we can connect with you directly. Also, download the Stand Firm app, wherever it is that you get your apps. Type in Stand Firm. That gives you access to every edition of Washington Watch On Demand as well as a host of other FRC resources. If you type in Stand Firm, wherever you get your apps. Now, yesterday, President Biden issued a statement condemning what he called, quote, government overreach at its worst. Yes, you heard me correctly. A statement from the president condemning government overreach. So what was it that he was condemning? Well, it's efforts in the state of Texas to protect minors from dangerous drugs and irreversible surgeries on the unscientific theory that they were born in the, quote, wrong body. What can we draw from the Biden administration's recent statements about this issue? Joining me now to talk about it is Roger Severino, who served as the director of the HHS Office of Civil Rights in the Trump administration. He is currently senior fellow at the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Roger, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thanks for having me. Well, so good to see you. Now, before we get into an analysis of what the Biden administration is doing, give us an update about what's happening in Texas. Well, the states are pushing back on the move to set a standard of care based on not science, but a transgender ideology that says that 12-year-olds and 13-year-olds can decide to never have kids again by taking puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones and even surgeries. Children are not in a position to actually make that sort of life-altering decision. Kids are going through tough times that are uh, difficult enough. And you don't want to have folks, including sometimes parents, pushing children into these lifelong, life-altering decisions when they simply do not have the maturity to decide that. And the Biden administration has tried to impose that as a standard of care, saying it needs to cover in insurance these sorts of transgender surgeries and as well as purity blockers and cross-sex hormones. And states are pushing back. The states, uh, including Tennessee and Arkansas, have had legislation making sure that this is based on science and in, in some cases prohibited these sorts of surgeries on children. And the state of Texas issued an attorney general opinion saying that it could actually constitute child abuse if in fact it is done to sterilize a child that does not have the capacity to make that sort of life altering decision. Again, the science is not there to support this sort of intervention in children when you have up to 90% uh, plus of folks where the issue resolves in children if they are just left alone. If pu puberty takes its course and if they have the proper support, then the issues of gender dysphoria resolve and you don't need to have these permanent life altering surgeries or hormones. Now, Roger, how could, you talked about the capacity, and this is an interesting issue because we're dealing with minors, and there are, of course, many things that minors cannot consent to. Is there a scenario in which, uh, un, uh, by in, in legal ways, a child could consent to have this done and have that be appropriate and proper? Well, we've seen that in Europe, they've pulled back on these sorts of permanent surgeries on children. And hopefully we're gonna see that there's a movement away from it, especially in kids. Again, they are not in a position to make this decision on their own, similar to things like having an abortion. You need to have the parents involved because they are in the best position to see and find out what it is that is in the best interest of the child. There are very few instances where the parents do not have the ability to be the ones that make the shots, to call the shots about their children's health, um, whether it comes to whether they could receive an aspirin in school, you need parents, parental permission. Children do not have the capacity to enter into legally binding contracts because they don't have the capacity to make those sorts of decisions. So we have to be very careful when it, call it, when it involves children. And the states are now making, making a statement saying, leave the kids to develop on their own, let nature take, take its course. When you're an adult, you're in a much different position to say what you want to do with the rest of your life uh, when you have issues dealing with gender dysphoria. But when the risks are so grave and all the, the hormones are off-label usage, they are not approved by the FDA for gender transition. We are experimenting on our children 
And this is a dangerous route that we need to push back on. And especially the Biden administration is going full bore. Dr. Rachel Levine, who seemed to deny support for these sorts of surgeries on kids, has come out in support, tweeting against the state of Texas for doing what it's done to protect children. And for those who may not recognize that name, Dr. Rachel Levine identifies as transgender, so has made this a a, a, a passion issue um, personally, a, which is what- The Assistant Secretary of Health for the Department of Health and Human Services, a top doctor for HHS essentially, is now on board with these permanent life-altering treatments that sterilize children, and that's just sad. Which- certainly has something to do with the reason the Biden administration has been so aggressive about this issue. Now, I want to talk specifically about that and what the administration is doing, but I also want to play some remarks that he made in his State of the Union about this issue. Let's go ahead and play clip five. The onslaught of state laws targeting transgender Americans and their families, it's simply wrong. And I said last year, especially to our younger transgender Americans, I'll always have your back as your president so you can be yourself and reach your God-given potential. Roger Severino, what's your reaction to that? Well, if he truly cares about children, he will support them in sometimes difficult circumstances. You let nature take its course and you do not sterilize children before they have the capacity to make that sort of life altering decision. Imagine a 12 or 13 year old child put in a position to say whether or not they ever want to have kids of their own. Think about that. You do not want to put a child in that sort of circumstance. Even the, uh, the leading transgender advocacy groups are saying you should wait till after 18 for the surgeries. That should also apply to puberty blockers um, because we don't know all the full risks. We do know there are certain risks in terms of bone structure and bone density, increased risk of all sorts of bad life outcomes that the state of Texas cited in its reports. And these are acknowledged by LGBT advocacy groups. Uh, Fenway Health was one that was cited, that they list all the different possible complications that could come from these experimental treatments. And you don't want to do it on kids. And that's ultimately the bottom line, to protect our children. Now, this administration is ignoring that, and it has moved Mm -hmm. to make it an essential health benefit in insurances on the exchanges under Obamacare. They're moving in April to issue a rule under an anti-discrimination provision to say that all insurance must cover it and all doctors must perform these transgender surgeries that remove healthy, perfectly functioning reproductive organs. And there's no exclusion for children. Um, that That is just bad policy and not required by the law. But people need to be aware that our federal government is moving headlong on a crash course to do this when the states are now pushing back and the science does not support taking these risks. And the reason this is important, of course, is because there's lots of data showing that children who experience gender dysphoria generally outgrow it once they go through puberty. It's it's upwards of 80% of children. So what you're doing is is you're sentencing, essentially, uh, children who don't have the chance to go through puberty to, to a future that they otherwise would naturally avoid. Now, there's one point of agreement I think we have with the Biden administration is that we do want to see uh, young people, including young people who struggle with gender dysphoria, reach their God-given potential. The differences that we have is what does that look like? Does that mean surgically modifying your body and changing your body so it can uh, at least temporarily uh, fit with your mind? Or does that mean helping your mind conform to what your body tells you about reality? And those are just very different approaches. Now, uh, Politically speaking, this is very interesting uh, because the Biden administration, after the press con, after the State of the Union, excuse me, on Tuesday night, not only did President Biden issue a statement, but also HHS Secretary Javier Becerra also also issued a statement. And this is like prime time. There's a real big opportunity after the State of the Union to kind of drive home some of your major points. And it seems that the Biden administration has seized that moment and the capital that they have spent in that moment is not on economic development. It's not on dealing with COVID. It's not dealing with inflation. It's not even dealing with Ukraine. It's pushing back against Texas on these transgender laws. Why is it that this issue for this administration gets so much attention? Well, Javier Becerra is a perfect example. He's ideologically driven. He did not have a background in public health, yet he was still appointed to the top health position in the country as Secretary of Health and Human Services. 
It made no sense. It came out during the confirmation hearing that he did not have the qualifications to be leading this country during the pandemic. And it has shown the number of deaths now daily are higher than they were last year at the same time um, uh, of the year. It is just inexcusable that he has been AWOL during the pandemic, yet laser focused on LGBT issues, on abortion, on pushing back on the states that are working to protect kids. That was his background. When I was the director of the Office for Civil Rights under Trump at HHS, I found him to be the one that was liable for violating conscious protection laws, for requiring forced abortion coverage and insurance in the state of California. Cost him $200 million in Medicaid funds. And now he's the head of HHS and in charge of the Medicaid fund. And it's, it's uh, elections have consequences and we get the wrong people in these positions at the wrong time, it will have devastating consequences for both the country in terms of public health and also the rule of law. It just is, it speaks volumes that he has dedicated so much of his effort and staffed so much of his office with people that are ideologically driven on these issues when we have the pandemic that is really the one that it's affecting people most. Yeah. Roger, is there a chance that they prioritize this issue because they think it's a political winner? No, it's because they're responding to their base. The loudest voices that are on the left are, have not gone away. They've taken on the driver's seat on these issues. And there's going to be a backlash, I'm sure. And that's what you're seeing with state after state pushback. To think that the president of the United States had to dedicate time to discuss this issue when there's so many things going on in the country, it shows that he is playing to his base that brought him into office. And unfortunately, despite whatever pretensions that Biden put out as being some sort of a moderate, he is not. He is beholden to the far left of his party and especially on the social issues. The culture war continues. And in fact, it's gotten worse. He has not united us. He has driven wedges and it's and it's our children should not be pawns in this fight. Yet they've become so. And that, that is a, a tragic consequence. This is not games. These are real children's lives that are at stake. that could have long term lifetime consequences and states are stepping up, but the Biden administration is saying that they won't be able to. And they'll eventually, if this April rule is promulgated, threaten to cut off their funding, Medicaid, Medicare, all of it. So people need to be aware and comment when the rule comes out, Section 1557, let your voice be heard. That That is the, the way the Democratic voice can actually be implemented by commenting on these regulations coming down the pike from this administration. We're talking to Roger Severino of the Ethics and Public Policy Center. Now, Roger, we know that parental rights has become a big issue nationally. Uh, most people think that it flipped Virginia from a blue state to a red state, helped Glenn Youngkin get elected there. We've seen activism at the school board level across the country, parents trying to take their play, their rightful place back as the guardians of their children, uh, their children's education. Uh, however, or in addition to, the left seems to be seizing that issue on with respect to transgenderism and saying, this is an issue of parental rights. And, they, and there are, of course, some parents who are supportive of their minor children transitioning. Do you think it's true that the government has no place having a position uh, with respect to a minor if their parents are okay with it? No, the government always has the duty to protect public health, and it has to be balanced with parental rights. Absolutely. And what we saw in the COVID debate was kind of the flip side, where you had government go so far into masking children in schools when the risks really were not there to them and taking away the parents' rights. Same thing on the transgender issue in schools in Virginia that you alluded to. There was a student who identified as female that was allowed to go into female safe spaces like bathrooms and a sexually assaulted a young girl. The father got mad raise the issue with the school board that denied this was even a problem. They shuffled this student who was, again, biologically male to another school who then sexually assaulted another girl. So again, the, the issues are, are real and the parents need to be involved at every step. There has, there's definitely a role for the public to play when these are lifelong issues. Um, so there's a role for doctors, there's a role for parents, there's also a role for states to have the freedom to step in to protect children, uh, like the state of Arkansas, Tennessee, and now what Texas is doing. There's always that, that role. Sometimes parents are not acting in the best interest of the children when it comes to healthcare. There are limits even on religious freedom, right? If a parent says, hey, I don't want my child to get a blood transfusion, uh, the state can step in and say, I'm sorry, 
the, the child's life is, is uh, more important in this case. So there are instances that, in fact, the government is justified in saying this is too far because it is too dangerous. Again, this is off-label experimental uses with permanent yeah. consequences with respect to sterilizing children. That's what it's about. Right. And we have to take a deep breath before we take that step. Roger, we got less than a minute left. We know that a court actually stepped in this week and prohibited the state of Texas from investigating a particular family dealing with a gender transition. What's the future of this issue in Texas? Does it survive legally? It's going to go to the courts. Again, any of these contested hot button issues are going to go there. Uh, and I, at the very least, I will hope that the courts will say you can't compel people, doctors, to perform these surgeries. You can't compel people to pay for them. And then whether or not it is the standard of care, do states have the do states have the primary authority to say what constitutes good medicine or not? They're the ones who license doctors. So that's going to be what the issue is at stake in these decisions. And again, it'll ultimately end up in the courts um, to deciding it. I am hopeful that the states will be given enough room to be able to say what is you. safe and not. For your vigilance, Roger, we are unfortunately out of time, but it looks like you are someplace beautiful and we'll let you get back to that. Thank you for taking some time for us.